Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show, a podcast exclusively designed to create more reproductive health awareness and discuss your fertility preservation options. Here is your host, the Harvard-educated fertility specialist, Dr. Amy. Welcome to another episode of the Egg Whisperer Show. Tonight's episode is titled The Secret of IVF Stimulation. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this tonight is because if you're a patient of mine, you're going to get all my secrets. And in fact, one of my favorite patients dedicated a blog to her entire IVF cycle with me as her doctor. I think IVF is fun. I thought it was kind of clever that she titled the website is very fun. And so my patients actually benefit from her experience through her IVF cycle. But I realized that not everyone has access to the website, to me. And so I want to make sure that everyone can learn from my secrets tonight. Okay, so you're at the starting line of your IVF cycle. So what you want to do when you're at that starting line is you want to know, why am I here? How did I get here? Have I done all the tests possible or needed to understand what might happen. You know, my patients ask me all the time, what might happen during my IVF cycle? What could go wrong? And I don't like talking about what could go wrong. I like talking about, well, what could we learn? Well, we could learn that maybe this isn't the right protocol. You might not get as many eggs as we originally thought. You might not get as many embryos as originally thought, but whatever we learn, it's gonna make us better and help us get that much closer to our goal. And there are a number of tests that you can do now. I used to tell people that an IVF cycle was actually the most comprehensive fertility diagnostic test that you can do. It's one way to actually see how the egg and sperm look, and that's the only way. But I would say that there are a lot of tests that you can do now, fertility gene tests on both men and women, that can potentially predict what you might or what might happen with your embryos. So let's say you did a fertility gene test for the sperm and you found out that you might have less less blastocyst than originally expected. Well, maybe that might guide you to consider doing more than one cycle or at least a better set of expectations so that you wouldn't be surprised or disappointed if you got less embryos than you originally thought. So you're back at the starting line and you're wondering, well, how am I going to start this? Well, I'm actually the worst cook ever, like awful, horrible. I can't cook anything. I can't bake a cookie. I am a master chef, though, and I make a mean momlet. Get it? Momlet? Omelet? But mom, I know you got it. So whenever I think of making embryos, I think, okay, well, you know, you think of these people who are like amazing bakers, and then they can like add a little something, something to make their cookies just a little chewy or add a little something to make a little salty. But then at the end of the day, it's a cookie. So while I'm here sharing my IVF secrets, when you're seeing a fertility doctor, you really want to rely on their expertise. One of the things I say, or one of the many things I say is, don't believe everything you read. Just because you see it on a blog or on a YouTube show doesn't mean that it's true or applicable for you. So your fertility doctor knows your body the best. So be sure to ask them why, 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 and why. Why are they doing what they're doing? Make sure you know everything about the sperm and egg before you are actually embarking on your cycle. So back to starting the cycle and starting stimulation. Everyone wants to be natural. I mean, especially in California, who doesn't? We want to be as natural as possible. And there's this idea out there that less is more. Well, certainly less is more in certain cases. One thing that can confuse many people is they don't understand why, when you're doing IVF, you actually need to take injections. Why can't you just show up and have your eggs retrieved? Well, the reason why you can't do that is because you have to basically grow, or what I say, cook the eggs. They have to mature. Only mature eggs can turn into an embryo. So once eggs are retrieved, the mature egg is then either frozen if you're doing egg freezing or turned into an embryo at the same time. And that's what we call IVF. And the other thing is that you have to take medications because naturally your body's only going to send enough of an FSH signal to your ovary so that you ovulate one egg a month. 
And so I'm sitting up there on my lifeguard post, sending out little tiny life vests to all the eggs because I consider myself an egg rescuer. I'm rescuing eggs from being lost. They're lost every day. It doesn't matter if you're on birth control pills, if you're breastfeeding, if you're pregnant. Women lose eggs. We have a finite supply. And going through a fertility treatment, even if it's not IVF, basically is a way of saving eggs from something that just automatically and naturally happens. So that's why you actually have to take fertility hormones. And the hormones are higher doses of FSH than your brain is sending to your ovary. So while your brain sends a certain level to ovulate one egg, remember I just said that, you have to take the shots so that you ovulate more. So this is what an ovary looks like. So to you, you probably see a bunch of you know, black circles and lots of grayness around there. So to me, I see something just so beautiful, right? And so to me, those are follicles, teeny tiny, basically balloons, and each balloon contains one egg inside. And so while you're taking the medication, those follicles are growing from a small size to a size closer to about two centimeters before the egg is extracted. So when you're trying to figure out, well, what are my chances before I go into this cycle? You have to remember that you're not a bunny. We're just human beings. And each egg is not a baby. Each egg is a chance for a baby. And that chance is basically determined by your age. So at the start of your cycle, sometimes people need birth control pills. And the first thing people do is look at me like, I've lost my mind. Amy, I want to have a baby. Why are you prescribing birth control pills? And so I want birth control pills to be rebranded when it comes to IVF. They really should be called IVF readiness pills because we're not trying to prevent you from getting pregnant. We're just trying to get your ovaries ready. So there are a lot of different ways of starting IVF. So there's a natural cycle start. There's a birth control pill start. There's something that sounds super sexy, estrace priming start, right? Doesn't that sound sexy? You can also do testosterone priming. So the way you start a cycle is determined by a number of things. I'll just tell you what I do. So we know that if a woman takes birth control pills, potentially she might get less eggs. So let's think about this. If you're older and you already have a lower number of eggs, well, for me, it doesn't make sense to start you on birth control pills. I do have patients that need the birth control pills, even if they have a lower number of eggs, and that is if they have a very set schedule. For example, they can only be available on very certain days and have their retrieval fall on a very certain day. And so starting with birth control pills gives them the opportunity to plan their cycle even months in advance. To do a natural cycle start, you have to be very flexible. Once your period starts, you start meds on cycle day number two. So you have to kind of be available, ready to come into my office, be able to call me, let's say, the first thing in the morning and come in that day so that we can take a look at your ovaries, take a look at your hormone levels, and make sure that the plane is ready for takeoff. You know, like when you're sitting on that tarmac and you have to have everything checked to make sure that everything is absolutely perfect before you start the plane. Well, that's the same thing when it comes to starting an IVF cycle. The other thing is every center, every doctor is different. So some centers actually don't have the flexibility to do natural cycle starts, but I'm a little bit different. Next time, I think I need to wear a shirt, I should go that direction, that says, if your ovaries are working, so am I. So it doesn't matter if it's Sunday, if it's Memorial Day, if it's Thanksgiving, if your ovaries working, I'm gonna be there too. So that's why I can offer natural cycle starts to my patients because I don't, let's say, batch cycles. That's something that a lot of even excellent centers, they do for a number of reasons. So before you start your IVF cycle, remember I said, ask why, 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 and then why and why. Why am I on this protocol? Why did you choose this protocol for me? And if you, if you start off with that, then you're going to be more informed, know why things are happening the way they're happening so that you can be a part of the process rather than feel like something is actually happening to you. Let's say you wanna do IVF. So in order to plan the stimulation, you have to make a calendar. It will make a calendar for you. We can do it in person. We can do it over video call or a phone call. And I will actually mock up exactly how your life will look. It'll start with a baseline ultrasound. Baseline just means that starting scan. 
And I like to do it maybe a couple days before your period will start, especially if it might start on a weekend. Otherwise, ton of flexibility. Because if let's say your period starts on a Saturday and you need to start meds Sunday night, well, it's very hard to get medications to someone on a Sunday night. So I just want to make sure that you're never feeling overwhelmed and rushed and everything can go very smoothly. So that first appointment lasts about an hour to an hour and a half where you're going to meet with me or one of my assistants to teach you how to mix the medication. What I find is that patients waste a lot of money with medication errors. So whenever people say IVF, you think of these big hypodermic needles. I mean, I'll show you one. Here's an example of a needle. This is what everyone thinks. And that's going to go in your butt. But nothing goes in your butt in my office. Good joke, right? The reality is the needle looks more like something like this. It's much, much smaller, and it goes in the skin of your tummy. So exactly where tummy? It really doesn't matter. I mean, you have less sensory nerves in the lower part, so it hurts less if you go in the skin of your tummy. And most patients say, I cannot give myself the shot. It actually hurts less if you are giving yourself the shot. If someone is coming at you with a needle, it might hurt more than if someone, let's say, prepares it for you and brings it to you or you prepare it for yourself. Each shot will take about 15 minutes or so for you to prepare. And we teach you how to mix your medication. And if you ever have any questions at all, you call. You don't go to Google. You don't go to YouTube. You don't phone a friend. You call me. Because your medications and making sure they're right is actually the most important thing to me. There's only one time I get annoyed. I get annoyed when people don't ask a question. That's when I get annoyed, if people make a mistake because they think that maybe they're going to bother me. But I only get bothered if you don't bother me. So you saw that original calendar, right? So once your period does start, if let's say we were doing a natural cycle start, we would then make another calendar for you that tells you exactly what to do every single day. We'll sit down at that baseline appointment. That appointment is in three stages. Stage one is, or step one is, Ultrasound to make sure no cysts, do a blood draw. Then a meeting to review the protocol. And that protocol depends on your follicle count that day. So if your follicle count is, let's say, over 15, I would consider lower dose of medication. If your follicle count is, let's say, under 5, well, then maybe perhaps we'll consider a more natural cycle start or a hybrid, or a natural cycle, I should say, or a hybrid cycle using fertility pills with injection. So on this calendar right here, you'll see that I use a medication. So letrozole is also known as Femera. It's used for breast cancer prevention. And unlike Clomid that requires an exorcism, I promise you it does. It has less side effects. It lasts in your system only two days also. You know, like a lot of meds, some patients will have hot flashes, mood changes, nausea, vomiting, you know. But for the most part, Femera doesn't have those side effects like Clomid but I would say that there are maybe one out of 10 patients that will actually have lower leg cramps. That's actually not an insignificant side effect that people report. So I combine the fertility pills for five nights with fertility shots, and you come in a lot. It's not just, oh, start your meds, see you in seven days. I mean, I see some people after just two nights of meds, after three nights of meds, after five nights of meds, and the decision when to come back in is really determined by what's going on with you. What have we learned from your prior cycles? Are you someone that makes a follicle really, really fast? Well, I want to see you earlier so that we can start the antagonist. And on this calendar right here, cetratide there, right there would actually slow the follicle growth. So going down the list, you have the Femara, which is a fertility pill, Menopure, which is the FSH and LH hormone. Remember in the beginning, I said that we have to give patients a higher signal of these hormones that their brain sends to their ovary, so they ovulate more than one egg. And then the estradiol blood test is something that we do at each visit because we like to watch the rate of rise because we expect approximately a doubling every, with every visit just to track the follicle growth. And then the ultrasound also guides us about the sizes and when to start the antagonist, also known as cetratide. There are a number of brands to these medications. But based, the antagonist refers to a medication to slow down the growth and prevent the egg from actually leaving the ovary. So the next thing that you'll see on there is actually something called human growth hormone. Another name for it is Omnitrope. That's the generic version. Brand name is Saison. So I offer growth hormone basically to any patient who I might 
think has lower egg quality. So I have a fun slide, but I'll show it to you in a second. But before I do that, I just want to show you another example of other protocols. So I do have patients that are on actually much higher doses of medication. So they're taking straight FSH hormone, and the brand names for that is Folistem and Gonal F. So those are the different brands for straight FSH with Menopure at night. So I do sometimes have patients do twice daily dosing, but for the most part with me, it's one shot a night every night for approximately 10 nights, a total of five visits from start to end. So here is uh, another example of a straight Menopure protocol, and this is one shot a night. And then the way we teach patients how to do medications is while you might be taking up to three, maybe even four different injectable forms of medication, we actually teach you how to mix them all together in one shot so you never have to give yourself more than one shot or feel like a human pin cushion. So back to HGH, when I say, oh, I want you to take HGH, everyone thinks, oh, I'm going to get taller, I'm going to get buffer. I'm gonna... No, I mean, basically it's an anti-aging supplement. So the thought is that it might help with egg quality, it might help a woman get one extra egg. It, it doesn't seem to hurt. It just hurts your pocketbook because it's rather expensive and most insurance companies would, will not cover it, even if you have coverage with IVF. I mean, there are the lucky few who have the coverage for the HGH. So I offer HGH to every woman automatically over 40, any woman regardless of age with an elevated FSH level, and anyone who, let's say I sense, might have lower egg quality, for example, someone with a history of endometriosis. So that's who I would offer HGH to. So when it comes to the secrets of IVF stimulation, I think the most important thing is to ask questions, ask more questions, and ask your doctor, why am I doing IVF? If you don't know the answer to that question, you should know. Is there anything that I can do to make my chances better or higher? Why am I taking the meds that I'm taking? Why did you pick this protocol for me? So my patients know the answers to those questions. And I find when I see patients who come from all over, and let's say they've done multiple IVF cycles, and I ask them, well, why did you have to do IVF in the first place? And they say, well, I don't know. I think it's important to know because ideally I like to set up each patient so that they have the best chance for getting pregnant without my help. So if I can give people an idea as to what they can do on their own to give themselves the best chance, whether it's, let's say, losing weight, making sure the triglyceride level is low, then perhaps the egg quality is going to be even better, even if we end up doing IVF. So that's my philosophy as far as IVF stimulation. Thank you everyone for watching. So remember, get your levels checked, get your levels checked, get your levels checked. And if you have a hard time getting someone to get your levels checked, go to eggwhisper.com. And join us next Wednesday for another show. And we're going to have a lot more fun. I'll find more props to show you. So come back and tune in to see what wacky props I have next. Have a great night. Thank you so much for listening and making the Egg Whisperer show a part of your weekly routine. To find show notes and a full transcript for this episode, visit dramy.org and look under the blog tab. While you're there, you can find a link for the Egg Whisperer newsletter, which keeps you in the know about fertility news. You can also find Dr. Amy and The Egg Whisperer Show on YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook. If you'd like to learn even more, Dr. Amy offers classes at The Egg Whisperer School, eggwhispererschool.com, or you can request a consultation on dramy.org. Thank you so much for tuning in and for sharing The Egg Whisperer Show with others. Keep sparkling and have a great day.